Hello F11 members and welcome to the Fundamentals of Post-Production Video Tutorials for Issue 58, November 2016. Now on the screen in front of you we have a picture of cows. Uh, now this is an image shot with the uh, one of the very first frames I shot with the new Canon 5D Mark IV, which I'm field trialing in the very same issue of this Chasing the Light online magazine. You can read that field trial and see the sample pictures there, but this was uh, one that I shot which illustrated well just what detail I could pull out of what seemingly looked like tortured shadows and burnt out highlights. So I thought we'd go through the post-production on this image. It looks straight out of the camera pretty awful, it has to be said. Uh, the sky looks devoid of interest and the shadows look irretrievably blocked in. Yet if I look at my histogram up here to the right, you can see that all the detail is actually there and there is seemingly no clipping of highlights or shadows. So it's my job now to try and pull that out of the image. How am I going to do that? Okay, the first thing I'm going to look at are those tortured highlights. And if I come down here to my highlight slider and pull it, those highlights right back all the way to minus 100, as far as it will go, I'm bringing back quite a bit of the detail in that sky. It's still a sky lacking in impact, but nevertheless, the detail is there. Similarly with the shadows here in the darkest part of those black cows. Uh, now the thing is, uh, it's very contrasty light, very contrasty subject. So this is a real test for the uh, exposure latitude of the 5D Mark IV. So I'm going to pull those shadows across and you can see just how much detail I can pull out. Now obviously that's going too far. I'm going to come back to around about plus 60 and see how we look so far. Now this, that's uh, dealt with those shadows quite nicely. The image though, overall looking at the image, it is still much, much too bright. So I'm going to use the point curve now and just darken down the whole of the image until aesthetically it looks much more pleasing. Uh, I'm pegging this adjustment really on the green here in the fields. Uh, and I'd say that's a nice neutral mid-tone green for the fields to be. Uh, I'm just going to boost those shadows a little bit more, having darkened down the picture up to about 75-ish. And now the picture is getting better all the time, but still I want that sky to have more impact and more bottle. So in this particular instance, I'm going to use my uh, graduated filter. Now if I hold down the shift tool here and pull it down, so it's sort of a, quite a soft grad starting here and ending up here. It's going to affect the top of the cow's heads, of course, but I can do something about that. So I'm going to pull back my exposure until the sky has the kind of drama and impact that I want it to. A bit more, somewhere around that. Now the thing is, if I click here on Show Selected Mask Overlay there, it shows the mask where the grad is being applied. And as you can see, it's affecting the top of these cow's head. So I can actually fine tune that mask. Uh, if I now go here, still in the grad tool dial uh, palette, if I click on brush there, and come down here now, click on Erase, make sure Auto Mask is clicked. Uh, that will enable me to now erase away the mask so that the grad is not being applied to the top of the cow's heads. I can adjust the size of my adjustment brush 
again using the square bracket keys here, like that, and I can adjust my flow, my feather, uh, i.e. the softness of the brush's edges, and my flow. Flow, actually, if I have it up to 100, it means that I do, I do the adjustment all in one go, which sometimes can work quite well, but sometimes you want to build up that kind of, this, these kind of brush strokes. But it's working quite well here with the flow at 100, and because I've got auto mask in, it's picking up the edge of those cows heads and only applying the adjustment brush to that area. I'll carry on doing that. And now if I come down here and click off the mask overlay, I can see the effect of what I've done there. And it's really quite impressive, isn't it, that uh, you can fine tune the effect of that grab tool so easily. I think this is a very very useful and powerful tool, uh, meaning that so many adjustments, image editing adjustments can be made just in Lightroom without having to go into Photoshop. Okay, so that's looking good. So I'm going to click on done there. Uh, and already the picture is really radically transformed from our starting point. Now, what I'm going to do is just add a touch of vibrance to the image. Not too much, around about plus 10. I think uh, it will be difficult for you to pick up on uh, video, but generally speaking, the feel of the images of the straight out of the 5D Mark IV is very appealing. They have a really nice uh, tonal quality to them. Very similar to the 1DX Mark II, actually, which is hardly surprising. Okay, of course I now need to adjust my sharpening, so I click on the Lightroom preset here, Sharpen Scenic, and I'm now going to come down here and apply a mask for my sharpening by holding down the Alt key, moving the masking tool across so that sharpening is not being applied to those areas in the sky where there's nothing to sharpen and round about plus 18 is about right for that particular picture. At this point, I would say I'm pretty much done. I could, of course, enable my profile corrections, which would correct the image for uh, distortion, image distortion and vignetting. Remember, all lenses uh, not have not quite equal coverage, i.e., they're slightly brighter in the center than they are in the edges. And if I click on, and they also are distorted, no matter how good the lens. If I click on Enable Profile Corrections, it recognizes the lens I used, the 24, mil, 24 to 70 millimeter lens, mid-range zoom, and it cracks for those distortions and vignetting. But as I've said before, if it's not a problem, don't do it. The vignetting actually adds to this image, I think, having the edges of the image darker than the center. And as for distortion, well, there's nothing there in the image that really, no fine detail, no, no architectural detail that would give away any distortion. So if you don't need it, don't do it, because all it's doing is stretching the image. Uh, generally speaking, with all post-production, the less we do, the better. And so there it is. That is the finished image. And if I now go back to where I started and come out on the size, you can see the difference. Quite radical. Uh, amazing, really. Uh, and so what does this mean? Well, clearly, the detail that's there in the shadows is really quite impressive. Does it affect the way I'm going to work in the field using the 5D Mark IV? Well, I would say that we always need to pay attention to our exposure. We always need to maximize the amount of detail being recorded in that precious raw image. But of course, 
This means that probably I'll be using grad filters over the camera lens even less than I am doing at the moment with this kind of ability to shoot uh, and keep that kind of range of detail in both highlights and shadows. Of course, grad filters are very, very useful to use, but in this particular case, using a grad filter would have affected the tops of those cows there. It wouldn't have been that practical in this situation. So there you go. Proof is in the pudding. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, we'll be uh, moving on and working with another image from uh, a recent shoot in Canada in part two of the fundamentals of post-production video tutorials for issue 58. See you there.